Today I'm playing NCAA Football 11 and rebuilding the worst team in the game until I win a national championship with them. Western Kentucky is a D overall at every rating, and I have no idea how hard this game's dynasty mode is because I've never played it on here before. It is never great to be starting with a 60 overall team, but that's what we're stuck doing, so I'm excited that we have a sophomore quarterback that has 89 speed. Aside from him, there's not many other bright spots on the roster, but I will be redshirting some players. And even though our strength of schedule is rated as an F, I have a feeling that we're probably not going to win more than like one game this year. What's it's gonna make this rebuild really difficult is I'm not sure how recruiting goes, and our school ratings are far from good, so I have a feeling that I'm gonna struggle, but at least we have five different pipeline states. As for our team needs, we can disregard this screen because we need to fix about everything, and the first thing I want to do is find any prospects that have us in their top three. There is literally only four of them, and they're one stars, so I'm gonna have to expand to a top 10, and that gives us 22. Out of all the guys that want to come to Western Kentucky, there's just two two stars, and I think it's really interesting that I'm already able to see a lot of the player's stats right off the bat. What we're clearly going to have to do is just search by pipeline and maybe go after three stars, but all these guys' top three schools consist of some bigger programs, so maybe we're just going to target guys from Kentucky. It took me a while, but I have filled out our recruiting board with 30 different players, and it's going to be hard to convince them to come to a school that's supposed to be this bad. As I scroll through all the Sunbelt schools, though, the only one that's not a one star is Troy. So even though we're going to get destroyed in games like this, maybe it'll only take us three or four years to be a better team in our conference and Kentucky beat us by 29. Our big focus though is getting players interested in our school and in this game it looks like you can spend up to 60 minutes on the phone with a prospect. Every 10 minutes you make a pitch and you can compare your school to other schools but none of our grades are good so I have a feeling these pitches are not going to turn out great and that's all right. If I'm remembering right from older games though the promises are really helpful as you can do something like solid playing time first year and I might as well offer all of these guys a scholarship just to see if they come to our school. This is what it looks like after you're done with each phone call and that is a very tedious process, so I'm probably going to skip over a lot of it in this video. Now, the unfortunate thing is some of our pitches worked while others didn't, so now I have to remove players from our board we didn't gain anything on, and I feel like I'm getting better at making pitches, but one of the issues I'm running into is it doesn't let me promise things like guarantee a game in a player's home state, and if I don't find some new prospects in this class, it's going to be terrible because after the first four, it's two stars and below. It would be nice if we could win some games on the field, and I'm allowing myself to hop into three regular season games a year, so that's what we're doing versus Akron, and the intro on NCAA football 11 sick. Our main focus is obviously having success though and they've already gotten in pressure so I had to run it with Cook down to the two and it's nice to have a fast quarterback. Now we're going to hand it off for the tutty. That's a solid start for the Hilltoppers and even though I'm playing on Heisman, one thing I've already picked up is this is very similar to NCAA football 14 so we should be able to get some defensive stops and on third and nine they are sending it well deep but that is going to be out of bounds. I really hope they don't review this because he might have been able to drag a foot and by the time there's a minute left in the half it is still seven to zero, that is going to be off target. So Akron has stopped us a lot, but I've been having a fun time with all the different animations and I'm kind of worried that they're about to tie it back up. The entire purpose of hopping into this game was to figure out how these mechanics work. And I got to give NCAA Football 11 a little bit of credit. The defense on here is really hard to score on. Due to that, with about a minute left in this game, it is still all tied up and they have the ball. Akron is going to get past midfield with that deep throw. And playing with a team that's a low overall one like ours has been a real struggle. I need to get a user pick or something. I'm all over it right there. What just happened? That would lead to them scoring a touchdown. So with 30 seconds left, we're losing. And it's starting to hit me how hard of a challenge this rebuild's going to be. I'm just going to throw up a 50-50 ball, hope for the best. But it's pretty clear that winning a championship is not going to be simple, especially since I don't know how to recruit and please come down with it. For being a 64 overall, sophomore quarterback Michael Cook's kind of good. He will get us to midfield if it was held onto. And this is the fourth and 10. That snap was a little bit high, but I think we have them beat deep his arm was not strong enough and we're gonna lose to Akron. I don't think I can be too upset about that because at least we were in it up until the end, but our defense has got to get better and I have a feeling we're gonna get a lot of instant classics in this video. I really have tried everything to get this fullback to have any interest in our school, but it's not available still so we can remove him from our board. And I don't think there's any scouting on NCAA Football 11, so even though Corey Sapp has us as his number one team, this is the best we can get out of his ratings and we just gotta get him to commit here. The issue is I've already run out of promises to make him and we're about to schedule our first visit ever for tight end Will Benson. I wasn't sure how it would work in this game, but it's just a schedule visit button and that's going to be against Idaho. So it would be awesome if we could win that. And we're just going to have to hope for the best as I'm going to go ahead and sim it. And we won by 17. That alone could contribute to me not getting fired. But if you look in the bottom left corner on all of these prospects, we're competing with Louisville and Kentucky for them, which makes things hard. And you know, I'm struggling whenever I go to the bottom of our board and we've lost a one-star commit to middle Tennessee state. I think it's time to just test our luck and see 
see if there's any other prospects we can go after. And I don't know if Flowlock Cheese works in NCAA Football 11, but it definitely does in NCAA Football 14. The worst part about playing a new game on a new Dynasty mode is I have no clue how to do anything. Well, of all the extra three stars I tried to go after, these are the only two that are even interested in our school. And I've got a lot of guys that are ready to visit during week seven, so it would be nice to just get to that game. But right before that, we have to play at winless FIU first, and we destroyed them. Michael Cook didn't have a good day, but it didn't seem to make much of a difference. But the really important result is this one right here. I was getting ready to hop into it, but then I saw that we fell down to number two on Corey Sapp. And apparently you can set activities for an upcoming campus visit. This recruiting is honestly so in-depth, and I kind of hope the new game isn't like this, because it ends up being really time-consuming. But I don't speak for everybody, and let me know down below if you prefer 14 or 11's recruiting. So far, this game in the rain, though, has actually gone pretty well for us. We're about to score another tutty. And that put us up by seven, but we have to get them off the field on this third and ten, and our linebackers can't keep up with their receivers. That's how, by the time that the fourth quarter's rolled around, we're losing by ten points, and you cannot drop the ball there. I've experienced more drops with this team in a couple of games than I ever did playing NCAA Football 14, and there's no way that linebacker got that ball. This was an important visit week, but we didn't win, so I was probably better off just simming it. And not a single prospect committed to our school, but Louisville's stolen two of the best ones with some soft commits. I don't know what to do. They're getting every player that we won, and unfortunately, there's nothing that we're better than Louisville at, so our pitches just aren't going to beat them. I tried my best to get Will Benson, but I'm afraid he's going to probably commit to the Cardinals in the next week or two, and I'm just glad that we're not the worst team in our conference. We were supposed to be, but Sim has actually favored us so far, and it does again. It really stinks that we keep losing commits, though, like Cook committing to Akron over us, and we should not be losing out on two stars. It's also official that Louisville has stolen these two Kentucky prospects from us, and I don't know what it's going to take for me to find some other prospects for us to go after. The only thing we have to look forward to the rest of the year is we're not out of the race for a spot in the conference championship, but I know that we're going to lose eventually, so I'm practically ready to just jump into season number two. Even though we got lucky a few times this year, there's definitely not going to be that many more wins, and this is insane. With three games left, we're sitting at four and five. We also do have a couple players that have soft committed, but then the athlete that I wanted chose Miami, and I don't think there's anything I can do to get Corey Sapp at this point. We're so close behind, but he's about to go on a visit there, and as I advance the week, we signed our first prospect. Don't get me wrong, I'm not too excited because we lost out on some other players, and it's not like John Young is a great linebacker, but we needed something other than one stars, and most of these three stars, again, have no interest besides this one guard. You know, what's so great about the Sun Belt is all of these other colleges are also terrible, and that's why recruiting is so hard, but we do have four wins this year, and we don't get a fifth. However, we happen to sign four one-star recruits, and now we're playing our rivals, Middle Tennessee State, so this could be big. I would love to take them down and have a chance at making a bowl still, and you love to see it even if we're losing out on a one-star recruit to Arkansas State. The only problem is now Troy stands in our way because they're probably going to beat us so we're not going to make a bowl and I feel more confident simming it where we won in overtime. We might be struggling with recruiting as both of these three stars we were about to get chose other schools and that's a major problem considering there's 10 players on our board and the only ones that have chosen us are one and two stars. I seriously don't know if we would have made any progress if we didn't luck into going six and six and I should be concerned because we're losing 17 seniors but I really don't know what else I could have done and I'm going to have to look into how to recruit in this game. Just to wrap up season one, I did put a couple more players on our board, and it's saying we have a decent chance at landing this three-star running back, which would be amazing. But what always happens is as it goes on, they decide to go to other schools. And I was so bad at recruiting, our class is sitting at 120. Now, I'm not sure what the tiebreaker is in our conference to make the conference championship, but we didn't. And there might not even be one because I'm not seeing it up here on the screen. That means in the future, we have to win it outright, and we only threw for seven touchdowns. So Michael Cook really wasn't that dominant, and our best player was probably Marcus Jones. I'm also relieved to see that our number one receiver, a tight end's only a sophomore. And unfortunately, even though we did get six wins, we weren't able to make a bowl. Even though we didn't and I didn't meet our team goals, we still received an extension. And I'm scared how low our overall is going to drop since some of these seniors were really good players. Definitely not compared to some of the bigger schools though, and no transfers are coming in. So that's concerning. And it says that some new recruits are available. Not that any of these guys are any good because they're one stars, but we need something. And this is the final time that I'm going to go for some low lock cheese. I can't believe it worked, but we did get a four-star that actually wants to come to our school, and we still have a long way to climb, but I'm gonna try my best to land him, and it took ages, but we finally got a three-star to come to our school. Three-star Jonathan Wilkerson has committed, and we beat UCF out by one point, so that should tell you how important each one of these points are when recruiting, and there's the official signing after the soft commit. That actually came from another three-star receiver, and it looks like we're losing out on Wilkerson to UCF now, so he flipped on us, and they have better school grades than us in every category. I can't believe that just happened. And all of the three and four stars I thought we might
might actually land have soft committed to other schools. We even lost out on halfback Ronald Owen, who was so close to coming to us. And I have a lot of learning to do if I'm only going to sign seven commits in one class. The Jonathan Wilkerson flip still makes me sick. And these one stars are like 42 overall recruits. Why am I even putting Ryan Jones at a position? This is a major problem if three star Howard Davis is only a 63. And I am not kidding when I tell you that our linebacking room and corner room is the worst in the country. This is really bad. Some of our players didn't even improve that much. And I'm about to cut as many guys as possible just to hopefully get more transfers next year. We honestly might be worse than the FCS schools on our schedule. And when it comes to redshirting, I'm literally choosing like 54 overalls. With this many pipeline states, I've got to take advantage of it. And even if almost all of our school grades are terrible, I'm looking up an NCAA football 11 recruiting guide and figuring this out. I literally have to because we have so many team needs going into next year. And I'm assuming the prospects that are interested in coming to our school aren't that good, but everything has turned around already. Maybe going six and six is all that we needed to do to have better options. And I'm also going to search for players from the state of Kentucky, which could lead to us landing guys like Terrell Smith. Now, after looking at some guides, it told me to go after players that are the same prestige as our school, but we're a two-star one right now, and we're projected to win our conference. That can't be possible. We dropped down to a D minus overall, but our fluky six wins really helped us out as a school, and we do have a couple of preseason all Sun Belt players. Before we even hop into recruiting, I just want to make sure that we can be an FCS school, and I've realized that Michael Cook's replacement needs to be picked up this season. There's a couple guys on this board that I'll be going after, and so far, some of our bonuses have been a bit better. We aren't going to have any chance at landing Terrell Smith. I did try, but you'll see that we're first and second for a lot of these three stars. So I'm going to continue to take it slow, recruiting as carefully as I can on some of these guys. And last year, I made the mistake of offering scholarships too soon, but I will be doing it to anybody we're number one for, like three-star tackle Jason Tyson. It does make me sad Stan Hunt, who was second on our board, automatically committed to Louisville because they're beating us in recruiting and they're about to do it in a game. But there's nothing that we can do about it. There's two bigger programs than us in the state of Kentucky. And as I scroll through our recruiting board, I'm shocked at how many players we're first for, but maybe that's because we have a lot of open positions on our team. I'd even land my first instant commit in John Winston, but the 6'5 quarterback's probably not good because he has D throw accuracy. The good news though is I continue to get more instant commits, and the goal is to bring people on visits as soon as possible. Having playing time and proximity to home has been a cheat code for this class, and I'm really hoping that in the coming weeks we can sign a three star. I should probably play this visit week against Louisiana though, because I'd imagine that we could actually win this, and for a bad team, we got a sold out crowd. These fans love us even though our overall is not high, and by the end of the first quarter, we're down by three. That's completely fine though, because I've changed our offense to an option one and it's working. I'm pretty confident that we're about to get into the end zone again, but it's dropped. And how did this ball manage to hit two of our receivers in the hands and no one got it? Now we have to come out and goal line and just hope for the best. And I can't lie, that didn't look good, but I just want to reach the end zone. And on a third and goal, I think I'm going to run with Cook. That might be our best option, but he's going to be short, fumble the ball down at the one yard line, and we're not going to get the safety either. They're also breaking a tackle and another one as well. I think you can tell that our team is simply not good enough to win some of these matchups, but we have gotten them to a fourth and one and we're going to stuff the hole. It wouldn't even matter though, because Michael Cook would get hurt. So our backup quarterback was in and everybody drops it. It's not like he's going to be out for a while because it's only for a quarter, but we just didn't have what it took to win. And it's pretty obvious why some of these three stars didn't come in. Because we're ahead by so much on Jason Tyson, I do think we're going to get him, but on Colby Kane, Louisville's going to steal him. And we're going to be the lower overall team in every game this season. I don't know why we were ever projected to win the Sun Belt. That wasn't going to happen, but we managed to win games even as the lower overall team. And I really want to keep this two star prestige. It's given us a chance in recruiting, but none of these guys are committing. So we're going to need another visit week. And this time it's going to be against Troy. I'm also having fun recruiting against lower schools because we can actually make them lose points. And I'm going to need to play almost perfectly to beat the Trojans. I've lost every single game that I've hopped into so far, but that's because we have a defense that can't get a stop and an offense that doesn't seem to catch anything. So I don't know what to do to stay in this game. We have got to pick up this fourth and 10, but that throw was so off target. They would score again. And I think this is going to come a bit too late. I am not used to the physics on this game, which makes me play a lot worse. But after scoring that touchdown, we would get the ball back. And I think I got circle assuming this throw is on the money, but it wasn't. So now it's fourth down and that cover two knocked it away. I was smart though to sim the game because we'd get an interception and now we're about to reach the end zone. So as long as we save all three of our timeouts, we could still win this one and come on. He never made a break on his route. I was waiting for it. This time this has to be caught. And I clearly need to recruit some better wide receivers because they simply hate to catch the ball. That would have been an easy score, but it's pretty clear why we've been struggling. And when you combine my lack of skill with a bad team, it isn't pretty. No matter what, I'm not going to take it off a of Heisman though, because I want the challenge of winning a championship on here, and it's 
clear that Louisville has Colby Kane now. I don't love that we're no longer getting favored in some of these matchups, but FIU's having a good season, so we can expect to lose this game, and we still beat him by 17. I don't understand. We are a D-minus program, but we still get the right results, and we have to beat Middle Tennessee State because I promised a ton of different players we'd have a winning record against our rivals. That's been one of my top pitches, and it looks like Tyson Soft committed to our school. So things are looking up, but let's prove the predictions wrong in this one. This is the final game that I can hop into this year, and it looks like they have a pretty solid running back. So I'm just happy with two minutes remaining, we are still in this one, and please hold on to the ball here. It's not normal for us to make catches like that, but it was really needed in that situation, and they're going to get in some instant pressure. I'm going to have to run around with Cook, and that works perfectly. Our tackles on this team are absolutely atrocious right now, and after dropping that ball, we're just going to play our receiver even though he's hurt, because he's one of our best ones, and I'm going to turn catching on conservative. I've seen our receivers make too many mistakes to not have that setting on. We get the first down, and it's starting to feel like we are setting ourselves up really nicely to beat our rivals, but I don't know if this is something Cook can escape. The defensive lineman did not dive to make a tackle on him and goes down. We are just 10 yards away from the end zone. The speed option's going nowhere, though. So in order to beat them, we are going to have to throw it, and I don't see anything. I have so much time back there, though, and eventually that could have gotten open. It is third and nine now. They didn't go with man-to-man -man coverage. I should have taken the sack there. I'm not sure what happened, but we're going to have square, and that's why I kept Jackson in the game. All we have to do is hit this extra point to take the lead, and I swear, they better not somehow get a Hail Mary for like 70 yards to work against us. They have so much time back there and this is going to go short. We just have to make one tackle though, and come on boys, just bring him down. I have finally won a game that I've played, and that was an important one because I would have broken a lot of promises if I didn't. It should also make us four and three, and we have a new number one ESPN classic. To become bowl eligible, just like last year, we only need two more wins, and I'm expecting us to be FCS Southeast. They're not better than us, and they still got it close. We're also so close to signing these five three stars. We just need them to commit, and then on Andrew Archer, we're just behind by 40, so what I've been doing is comparing our school to Akron and hoping that we leapfrog them soon. This battle's gonna come down to the wire, but recruiting's definitely going better as we sign two tackles and two of these players are three stars. Six seven tight end Robert Miller excites me with his B plus acceleration, and as I scroll through these, I see two more soft commits. We're also only behind by one point to Akron now, so we have caught up to the zips and Andrew Archer is closer to coming to our school. We also have some extra points, so I can start to search for other prospects for us to target, and I don't know how many of these guys are gonna be interested in coming to our school, but we're about to find out. The next we have to face is 4-2 North Texas and it's on the road, so I'm expecting them to beat us, but we don't have a chance at winning the Sun Belt outright anyway, and in these last four matchups, all we have to do is pick up one win to make it to a bowl. As we continue to sim, we're going to pick up more recruits, and I see four soft commits to Western Kentucky, but we didn't get Andrew Archer. I really want to see if we're able to get him to flip, and this could be the result that makes us bowl eligible. The two announcers are split on their prediction, but FAU's 2-6, and six, so I would be upset if we didn't come out on top, and look at that, there's a couple more three stars on our team. As I advance the week again, I do have some good news, and that's the fact that I was actually able to get defensive tackle Andrew Archer to flip. If we can just win one more matchup as well, that would definitely guarantee a bowl spot. So seeing a close result where we come out on top like that makes me happy, and I'm still signing more and more recruits every week. These are the last few guys we're going after, so we'll see how that unfolds. But either way, I'm happy because this class is much better than what we did last year, and we really gotta step our game up because it's still not ranked very far up. Well, we did miss out on these two three stars, but we did get Jamal Jackson to commit, and just like last season, we're finishing near the top of the table in the Sun Belt. We missed out on making a bowl again though, and it makes me sick, but there aren't that many bowl games available for other teams to play in. Plus, I decided to put two FCS schools on our schedule, so we only beat five FBS ones. It's also throwing me off how there's a Mountain West conference in this game and also the WAC, but next year I'll schedule some schools from those conferences, and my approval rating's still pretty high. We also had somebody break the school sack record, and I can't be doing too bad if UCLA wants me to coach for them. Anyway, our best defensive player that did break the sacks record was Casey Brown. And I want to say the right end's going to be missed, but he's only a 64 overall. As for Michael Cook's season stats, it's almost like he got worse. And Marcus Jones did better, but he's a senior, so he's gone. Tight end Mark Holloway also fell off, being our sixth best receiver. And I'm guessing our team's just going to be worse with these guys graduating. However, maybe that won't be the case, and you can tell that I'm very happy right now because we have landed these four transfers. And they'll have to sit out for a season, but at least our team needs aren't as bad as they were. We still need to get some defensive linemen, which is why it's an issue that Clemson's beat us out for Aaron 
and white, and they're better than us in like every category, so there's no way we're convincing him to come to our school at this point. After dealing with that, there are 42 players I want to look through, because all of these guys still have no idea where they want to play in college, and if I could get any of them to consider Western Kentucky, that would be a miracle in itself. That didn't work for any of them though, and I saw that Jordan Harris decided on Clemson. The Tigers are literally stealing everybody from us, because with a perfect visit, we still don't have a lead on Aaron White, so I've had to add some more guys to our board and hope that maybe one of them wants to be a hilltopper. It might not work, but we got a one-star punter, and no matter how much I try with these guys, they just don't want to come to Western Kentucky. It's frustrating to lose Aaron White, and even more annoying that Stephen Harper doesn't have an offer from NC State, but they're still the favorite. So I'm probably about to just strike out during this offseason recruiting period, and I couldn't tell you how, but we got the halfback to flip. It might have been because the Wolfpack just didn't give him an offer, but I don't care. He was our sixth best prospect on our board, and our recruiting class wasn't great, but it did finish inside the top 100. I'm learning this is a slow rebuild, and our top four players are all going to have to sit out for a year. But what I really need to be concerned about is our quarterback room is terrible after Michael Cook graduates, and I thought our three-star recruits were going to end up being higher overalls. We're in a bit of trouble, but Julian Alexander becomes a 65 overall when we move him to left end, and I promised Jamal Jackson he would be a starter, so we need to make sure Anthony Nelson can start somewhere else. If these training results aren't great, I'm genuinely worried for the future of Western Kentucky, and I still can't believe how bad the three stars are as Stephen Harper is a 61. Our school ratings don't seem to be getting any better, and we've dropped Indiana as a pipeline state while picking up Virginia, but neither of those things concern me. What does is the fact that I have 39 promises pending from last year's class, and not much to show for it because we still have a ton of team needs. Pretty much every position on our roster I'd be perfectly fine with finding new players, and there's actually a few three stars that want to come to our school that are ranked inside the top 1,000. I'm actually kind of hopeful that we'll get some instant commits just because we're sitting on top of some guy's board, so I'm going to offer them scholarships and see where that gets us. It's so easy to recruit the players that want to come here, but then there's guys like 6'4 wide receiver Karen Thomas who runs a 4'4. I don't think we're going to get him, but I would literally do anything to make that happen. Well, it looks like we're supposed to finish second in our conference, so that would be great if our team overall wasn't a D- minus again. And I couldn't convince some of these other four and three stars to come to our school, but I did have Karen Thomas put us in his top four. That makes me happy, but I'm also a bit annoyed because this three-star quarterback that wanted to come to Western Kentucky already committed, and we have no other options that are interested in playing for the Hilltoppers. The more I go through this process, the more I'm starting to realize that we're nowhere near a championship caliber team, and I really don't know how we get there because these two options at quarterback are terrible. I'd then find these two guys, but there's no guarantee that they're going to want to play for us. And let's just focus on taking care of business on the field, because if there's anything that we should be able to do right, it is beat Eastern Michigan and they didn't score a point. I'll gladly take that, and now Fred Palmer doesn't want to come here, but Garrett Hamby does. So if we could just win this battle, he might be the savior of Western Kentucky football. I've also decided we're going to have our first visit week against FAU, and I'm not sure if I even want to hop into this one. Even though we're a lower overall team, we're supposed to win, and I've messed up recruiting visits in the past, so I'm just going to simulate and look at that. With Michael Cook being a senior, I feel like we should do pretty well. And I don't know how we've made this happen, but we are first on both Garrett Hamby and Karrion Thomas's board still. I also discovered this three-star athlete, Quentin McNeil, who has C-plus throw power, so that would give us another option at QB. And I don't even care because Garrett Hamby just instant committed. He has D-plus throw accuracy, but I guarantee he can't be as bad as Preston Fadenot or John Winston. As more players get interested in visits as well, that's going to be coming up against North Texas. And it's also important to mention we still haven't lost yet. I couldn't tell you why we're favored, but if anyone's played a lot of NCAA Football 11, maybe you could tell me why in the comments. And it really makes no sense as a D minus overall team, we are sitting at 3 0. I could not be happier though, and it looks like Karen Thomas is ready for a visit. This one game against North Texas is huge. Of the 16 players on our board, eight of them are attending this game, and once again, we're favored to win. So I almost see no reason for me to step in, but I might have regretted that. I mean, it really didn't change anything as we didn't get a single soft commit, but we're getting some bigger leads like on Karen Thomas. If I'm remembering right, I said Iowa would be on the schedule, and we're about to see if I'm going to regret that decision, but I don't. We've been playing perfectly, so there is a chance that we actually win the Sun Belt in year three, and it's about time that the soft commits start to come in. We also have athlete Quentin McNeil ready to come on a visit, but unfortunately nothing's available until week 13, so it's going to be a while before we find out if we're going to get him, and our winning streak does not continue. I'm not upset about it though, we officially got a couple more three stars, and seeing that wide receiver Karen Thomas has soft committed is the best thing in the world. I don't think you all understand, he is A- minus speed and he's 6'4", so theoretically Garrett Hamby might just be tossing up 50-50 balls to him, and if there's any team in conference play we have to beat, it's going to be Middle Tennessee State, but at Arkansas State's also important, so I'm gonna hop into it, and it's gonna be a rainy day. The fans do not seem to care at all though, and it would be super nice if we could finish this drive off with a touchdown, but they ran our route for us. I'm really looking forward to getting some better wide receivers in at Western Kentucky, but it hasn't been too much of an issue because we're still 
still up by 10 near the end of the second quarter. And if we didn't have to take so many field goals, this one might already be over. Our defense has been incredible though, forcing a fumble on the kickoff, which is why we have it down in the red zone again. And we've only been able to finish off one of our drives. I'm waiting for the slant to get open and there we go. If I've learned anything from this game, we've gotten a lot better even if we're still a D minus because I've never been able to cruise to a win that easy in a user game. And it's starting to hit me that I'm gonna have to play against Troy too. We're on the road again and they're a lot better than us. But for whatever reason, we're still projected to come out on top. And if we're gonna continue to be this lucky, I need to take advantage of it. I felt like I'd figured things out offensively in the last one, but it hasn't been the same here. So I'm just glad on our second drive, Troy stopped sending so many blitzes in our direction. And our senior tight end created no separation, but the defender just missed the ball. Up until this field goal though, that was our only other good moment in the first half. And here on third and 10, I kinda wanna try to go deep if that throws on target, but it's not. They would score again after that. And now we need to pick up this fourth and five, but that didn't work out either. So as time winds down in this game, I think it's all over unless we just got really lucky. The refs are saying he didn't get his feet down though. And I can't wait to have our faster and taller receiver next season. I need to see some more separation out there on the field. There's always the chance that we recover the onside kick after we get in here, assuming Cook does not fall short. And I hate myself. I accidentally selected squib middle not onside kick, and that's out of bounds. I got in such a habit of doing a certain thing to select that in NCAA 14, and it's gonna cost us a chance at pulling off a miracle. As long as we keep picking up the soft commits, though, I'm not gonna mind, because even if we don't win the Sun Belt, I'm just happy to be up there in the running, and all six of the players that we have signed so far are three-star recruits. I'm trying to set a new standard, as I've also found Mark Smith and Kerry Willis. This game against our rivals is so important, though, because I make the promise to pretty much every prospect we target that we're gonna have a winning record against them, and if I break that, we could be in a ton of trouble. So far, neither team's defense has really existed in this one, and I see the left side of the field is wide open, so we're going to be able to walk on in. And I'm so hopeful they don't pick up this third and long, they simply just handed it off, so we're going to call a timeout. And we're receiving this around midfield, Miller's not going to get much, but we've still done a decent job picking up yardage, and that is a bad pass. I really don't want to take our field goal here, but we don't have a choice. And the third quarter's gone entirely different than the first two did. We barely just picked up that fourth and inches, and neither team has been able to score. I'm I'm hoping that we're able to in this situation as that is dropped. Ever since they started going with more man-to-man -man coverage, we have really struggled. And they pretty much have us figured out. They're doing it again, so I'm going to try to scramble on this third and long, and Cook is going to make it all the way to the five. They'd even commit a penalty after that, and I know that I'm going to miss not having Michael Cook around next year. After scoring that touchdown, we'd pretty much seal our win, and we've yet to drop a game to our rivals in this rebuild. We also had a couple more three stars officially signed, and as the weeks go on, we keep on getting more and more of those. Right now, our recruiting class is ranked 62nd in the country, and we have one more important visit against ULM. If this goes well, these three three stars would all come here, including Quentin McNeil, and we're in luck that they're only a D overall. There's still a chance we could win the Sun Belt as well, but remember, UL Lafayette beat us by five, so they have the tiebreaker. And that's unfortunate, but either way, we're sitting at seven and two right now, and we got destroyed. That's a bit of an issue because now we're still stuck behind Southern Miss, and even though they're a smaller school, they're better than us in every single category. This is literally the only pitch that we might gain a little bit against them on. And I want McNeil so bad because he can throw the ball. In week 14, we have to play Kentucky. So I already know that we're going to drop another, putting us at seven and four. But it's okay because we're ending the season against an FCS school. And that was simple. As the regular season recruiting period wraps up, you're going to see that we do have a couple more soft commits. And if we would have just beaten one of these two Louisiana schools, we would have won our conference. So that's frustrating. But I just want to see us in a bowl game. And we're playing the number 10 team. This is our most lopsided matchup yet. And a bad way for Michael Cook to go out, who really cut it back on the turnovers. Even if he still didn't run the ball well, Damian Miller was honestly dominant. And when it comes to our receivers, tight end Mark Holloway was back on top as the number one. It always stinks losing good players like this to graduation, but at least we're improving and this could get ugly quick. Our players don't look too nervous leaving the tunnel, and maybe they aren't because we're on a third and nine that we're not going to pick up. Unfortunately, that didn't go to the right target, but we still have an opportunity to put up the first points of the game, and that was thrown behind our receiver. If it wasn't for dumb stuff like that happening, honestly, I feel like we'd be winning this one because with a couple minutes left in the first we're only down by three and are you serious we're better off just running the option because that was so off target and i did not even pitch it so now it is third and long i'm gonna roll out with cook and we have somebody in the end zone but they might get back to it we couldn't attempt the 51 yarder earlier but we should drill this 41 yarder and i've got to give credit to our defense here on third and 10 we should just make the tackle short of the marker so we got it back we've been driving down the field there's eight seconds left in the half now and i don't think we're getting in field goal range either 
either way, I'm so happy with how this has gone for us. We're gonna throw it up to the end zone, hope for the best, and it is knocked down. That was a really good first half though, and it's a shame that Virginia Tech started scoring so easily here in the third quarter. I've responded back once already, but if they keep getting us in these third down situations, something's gonna go wrong. And as time winds down in this one, we only have a couple more opportunities to get the ball back versus the Hokies. I am hopefully gonna get the sack, and that is huge. We're gonna have two minutes to get a touchdown, but there's a flag. It looks like it's going to be on us, and because of clipping, now we have to go 69 yards down the field to tie things up. There's going to be plenty of time back there, though, and Cook finds Miller over to the 35. If we reach the end zone, I am going for the two-point conversion. If we could beat the number 10 team, that would be insane. And I'm starting to chew the clock. There's just a minute left now, but they just sent in such a quick blitz. Now it's third down, and we're going down. That press man-to-man -man is so scary. They're running it again. I can just try to hit our tight end, but that's going to be the reason that we lose our ball. I'm really happy that it was that close, but it still would have been nice to come out on top. And I'm getting a job offer from Miami. That's nuts, but we're about to find out how bad losing Michael Cook's gonna affect this roster. And not too badly, because this year we're getting five players to transfer to our school. Even if they're only around for a couple of seasons, it's so much more effective than going after recruits. And there's two more three stars we get to add to our defense. Now, I am a little upset after all the effort I put in. We're gonna lose Quentin McNeil to Southern Miss, but sometimes that's just how things unfold. And I'm gonna go after some of these other players, but there's a good chance they won't even wanna come to our school. I've never done well during this offseason period, losing this outside linebacker to Wisconsin. But I won't be too upset because we did get an athlete to commit, and I'm not sure where Matthew Mosley plays, but we'll figure out in a few weeks. We also picked up a 661, and then on signing day, we landed JJ Henderson. Now, when I rearrange this board by caliber, our best two prospects are obviously our quarterback and wide receiver. So that gets me excited, and 14 three stars gets us the 83rd best class. We still got a long way to go before we're good, but I now get to move around these athletes to positions that work best for them. And 6'2 Matthew Mosley makes for a great running back. We've now got a few of them, but these three stars, especially Adam Turner, didn't turn out to be good. And I am so relieved that when I go over to Garrett Hamby, he's a 70 overall. Our 5'11", 195 pound strong safety also becomes a much better defensive end for us than anything else. So after weirdly moving around some positions, I think we're ready to start this year. The training results are now in and Richardson transferred in. We're only going to have him for a year, but that's perfectly fine. He is a monster. And I'm going to continue to cut players so we can get some more transfers. After doing Doing that, I got super excited because I looked at Karen Thomas's stats and he's got 88 jumping with 92 speed. And I can finally start to redshirt some players that are sophomores that I couldn't as freshmen. The reason for that is it's another promise that I normally make to a lot of the recruits. And our grades might not be going up much, but we're now a three-star school. That's going to be needed because at least offensively, there's a lot of needs that we have to fill. And I'm really excited to see the caliber of prospects interested in our school this year. There's 182 of them and they're ranked a lot higher than previous seasons. After seeing that and the fact that we're supposed to be one of the top teams in the Sun Belt again, along with the fact that our overall's gone up to a D, I'm pumped up for this season and the future, even if we're supposed to finish 81st. We have a freshman quarterback that's a 70 overall, but before we see if he's the actual future of our program, a word from Prize Picks, today's video sponsor. The NBA playoffs are already officially underway, and because of that, Prize Picks has this promo available with Jokic until Monday. You can pair that freebie with literally anything else, but me personally, after seeing Bradley Beal's last five games, I have no choice but to pair it with him getting more than 17 and a half points. Now take a look at the map to see if prize picks is available to play in your state, because if you haven't signed up already, code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to $100, and make sure that you also play responsibly as well. Now it's time to start another season with Western Kentucky, and I'm not expecting us to beat Kentucky in this first game, but I would like us to put up a battle it went to overtime. That's not too bad, but what is too bad is I accidentally promised middle linebacker Cole Campbell a national title in his first year on campus. My finger slipped, I made a mistake, and and this class is going to be really good, but that could come back to bite us. You see, the issue with making all these promises is if you don't fulfill them all, normally the players transfer out. So I shouldn't have made that mistake, but we already got an instant commit in Kedrick Thomas. And that can happen to anybody you're in first place on that you offer a scholarship to, like Dion Singleton as well. I absolutely love that part in recruiting because all of a sudden we could get other players to come to our school as well. But if it doesn't work out, then you have to go through this tedious process. After spending a while on recruiting, I'm ready to see us get our first win. And hopefully that can also give our freshman quarterback a little bit of confidence. He went 21 for 37 with 243 yards and no turnovers. And there are two specific prospects I want to point out with the first one being middle linebacker Randy King, who runs a 4-4. And then three-star wide receiver Chris Peterson, who also runs a 4-4. To my pleasant surprise, on top of that, I got Randy King to instant commit. And we're going to try the same thing on three-star quarterback Anthony Harris. So let's just hope for the best. And that is not it. We're also ready to choose our first visit week. And I think the best one would be against Arkansas State. So that's coming up.
coming up in week five, but we go on the road to North Texas first. Going into it, they're 0-2, and we're favored plus being better on paper. So my expectation is we go into visit week sitting at 2-1, and one, and that's what happens. The top six players on our board are all headed to Bowling Green this week, so it's a big deal. And there's not many trophies in the trophy room for them to visit, but that's what they're doing. I can't put enough emphasis on how massive this matchup is, though, for our class, because I'm also going to make sure these six players come. We definitely have a better roster, but there's no chance I can risk us losing this matchup, so I am going to hop into it. And I've been getting to use Garrett Hamby for the first time, which has been an interesting experience. It's definitely thrown me off to not have a scrambler that I can use. Here on 3rd and 13, we're going to pick it up, though. And the thing that's made it so easy to have success in this game is our defense, because they have been clamping up until this play. We should have gotten them off the field there, but hopefully we will on this 4th and 1, and we don't. They're setting up to score a touchdown to get it back within a possession. But remember, we have an 86 overall running back in Aaron Richardson, and Aaron Richardson gets us the first. He's been super fun to use after some of the previous ones I've had, and with one or two more first downs on the ground, this game is going to be over. The issue is they have gotten us to a third and 13, so we have got to pick this up, and that's well off target. It's intercepted, and Arkansas State has a chance to actually take us down. Please make the tackle. We cannot afford to choke this game. Here on third and eight, they are throwing it well out of bounds, and we just got to generate a little bit of pressure. I've sent five in, and that is going to be caught. Uh-oh. Maybe we'll get them off the field on this fourth and two, but that doesn't happen either. And I'm kind of terrified of running any zone, so we've been sticking in man-to-man, -man, but that's going to leave Henderson open. There is a flag on the play, though, and it looks like it's a face mask, so we might as well just let them reach the end zone now so we have time to kick a field goal. This is far from ideal. That almost stayed in the field, and I'm ready to just throw it up to Karen Thomas, but I'm gonna take a sack. We are really gonna need our tall and fast wide receiver to blow us out in this situation. Look at that 89 throw power. This is a 50-50 ball, and now it is third and 15, but he has beaten his man, and that throw accuracy is bad. It is starting to hit me that we are going to lose this game to Arkansas State, but he catches it, and that's our two freshmen hooking up. I might go with the same route again as long as they don't play it. There we go. This is one of the first times I've actually had success with a passing play on this file. Come on, please hold on, and I think the fact that he just dropped that ball pretty much cost us the game. We have an inaccurate quarterback out there on the field. This is it. We can reach the end zone with his throw power, but it's not going to be caught, and I should have just simmed it from the start. That could set us back for years. And it was an ESPN classic, but we didn't win. I'm so unconfident in my abilities. Now I just want to sim against Troy, which worked. And with all of those visits coming in, we didn't get a single soft commit. That result was actually kind of important if we want to win the Sun Belt. And it's also crucial that we win this game on the road, but I might be upset at myself for playing this one. Well, maybe not. Here we are in the third quarter, sitting with a 13 point lead over the Owls. And it would be really nice if we were able to pick up this third and long to the end zone which we do. Just like what I've pointed out in previous games, the key to our success has been our defense. And I don't know what their running back was doing. It also helps that I figured out this Seattle play is really good, so we can use it a ton. And even if we didn't pick up that third down, we're still going to have a 16-point lead. So I figured this one would be a lot harder to choke than our last game, and on 4th and 18, they don't pick it up. That means we're going to get the win over the Owls. And this stat line from Aaron Richardson is nuts. We'd also pick up a commit from a three-star guard, and those are going to be coming often as the soft ones are starting to flow in. I mean, as I scroll through this board, you'll see that this has potential to be by far our best class ever. And now we need to beat FIU because that would help us hold on to first place in the Sun Belt. And I'm so glad we have the tiebreaker over Troy. We need to win this though, and we do. To make matters even better, six of our top seven prospects on our board right now have soft committed. And I am a little upset that we're losing out on this linebacker to Ohio, but we could still get back in it. Anytime I can find anything that gives us points while taking away from them, I'ma do it. And that might just be enough to get them to flip. Now, next up on our schedule, Middle Tennessee State. And all the signs point towards us taking this easily, but there's something about rivalry games on the road that make me nervous, and thank goodness that was the result. It's going to be the reason these guys commit, including the 5'9 halfback. And I can't believe it, but I wasn't able to get Gordon Fisher to flip. I find that to be pretty frustrating, but at least we're still set to win the conference. And after getting that win, you're going to see five more three stars make it official. I'm going to have to start adding some more players to our board because after these top seven, it's just the ones that have committed. It really makes me happy to see all these commits coming in because at the beginning it was really hard to get him and I convinced this guy to flip from Missouri. It also just hit me that we really need a kicker so I'm hoping one of these guys is interested in being a hilltopper and my fingers are crossed for how this sim goes. No matter what happens I'm pretty sure we've already secured our spot as the Sun Belt champions but I don't want to start dropping games now and this is a good win. I'd also find out that there were two punters interested so we have some options and I don't see how we could lose at the Kibbe Dome versus one in nine Idaho so we beat them too. Our last game of the year is against San Jose State and we would have double digit wins if we could just come out
out on top of this one, which we do. We're also going to pick up another recruit, and there's our Sun Belt Conference Championship trophy. That should be enough to secure me a contract extension, but there is one issue with us signing so many of these players, and that's the fact that you only get 25 scholarships, so if we get the rest of those guys, we're only going to have room for one transfer, but this class is ranked high. I'm very happy with how this season went all around, and the best part is Garrett Hamby's only a freshman, and he's already had solid numbers. You could say the passing touchdowns were low, but that's because he was handing it off to Aaron Richardson, and this kid made the right decision transferring to Western Kentucky because these numbers are crazy. As for receiving, it's always our tight end that's our number one with it being sophomore Robert Miller. And this was the 6'7 guy I recruited that had high acceleration. We even saw one of our other transfers, Trey Hall, get 111 total tackles. And an 85 overall linebacker in the Sun Belt's just not fair. Now our running back wasn't in the running for the Heisman Trophy, but he will have one last opportunity to put on a show versus UCF, and he'd win the Walter Camp Award as well. What I wasn't expecting was to get the Coach of the Year trophy though. And look at that, they even gave Aaron Richardson the Doak Walker as well. I guess it makes sense he was second in the country for rushing yards. And let's cap off the season with our first bowl game win in this rebuild. I want to take that trophy home, but this is the most fans we've ever played in front of, and we've done well so far, but we're going to attempt a 50-yard field goal, and that is in. Like I've been telling you all, it is our defense that makes this team perform so well, and that's all because of the transfers that we were able to get, but we dropped that ball. So for the third time in this game, I'm having to settle for a field goal, and this could be the moment that we give up our first points, but we force the sack and a fumble. I'm going to pick it up with Harris. And this is the strong safety. I moved over to left end and he is gone. I don't know what type of play they were trying to run there, but it didn't work. And Aaron Richardson is going out on a positive note with a bowl game win over UCF and maybe one more touchdown. I am going to miss the senior running back, but at least he brought us a bowl game win. And this is a big moment in this rebuild. This will make our school an even higher prestige. And we've been claiming record after record during this Hilltopper rebuild. Even our freshman quarterback set one, and I'm still getting some good job offers. But I want to stay here and after this year, they should give me an extension. It's going to stink to see some of these high overalls that transferred in leave us already, but we didn't lose that many players to graduation, and we need the transfer portal to work in our favor, and it does again, giving us an 82. That's amazing, and with our five remaining scholarships, I'm hopefully going to sign all five of these guys, which I'm hoping will be easier now that we're a four-star school. Right now, we're behind USF for Jesse Smith, but with a good visit, we might be able to jump up to number one, and he did as the three-star guard has soft committed to our school. That's because I've been comparing our school to theirs, and I need to do the same thing for wide receiver Anthony Fuller because Cincinnati has a lead on us. Since they're a better school than us, it does make it a little bit harder. But at least we officially signed Jesse Smith, and this is the best that offseason recruiting has ever gone for me. Unfortunately, it wouldn't end that way with Lamar Porter flipping to West Virginia, but I might still be able to get Anthony Fuller. And going into the final week, it is a close battle. Odds are we just didn't generate enough interest, but I'm really not upset that he decided on Cincinnati because some of these players on our board were much higher rated three stars than we've ever had before, and that alone is going to land us the 58th best class in the country. Now, out of of curiosity, I had to sort for our freshmen and see the highest overalls, but the highest I saw was 65. And that's a shame because some of these guys were supposed to be a lot better. Because some of these players are still so bad, I'm just going to have to play around with seeing which positions they perform best in. And we have three punters on the roster that all have terrible kick accuracy, so one of them's going to have to become a kicker, while the other is going to get cut after we check out all of our offseason training results. My issue with how they went is Garrett Hamby only went up by one, and Howard Davis, who we recruited at the beginning, is now a senior. It is time for me to cut our roster size down to about 55 again though so we can get some transfers. And I remember being so excited about middle linebacker Randy King because he ran a 4-4 but he's a 61 overall. On the bright side I gotta mention how proud I am of how many pipeline states we've been able to acquire throughout this rebuild. That should help us meet our team needs which really aren't that much this year and we're only losing six seniors but our team grades upgraded and we have some B's now. Additionally as a four star school there should be even better players that want to come here and there's four stars. The great part about that is we're also starting in first for a lot of these three stars that I'm just hopefully going to get an instant commit on. And we've moved up to a D-plus overall team, but it should continue to rise as we keep going through the seasons and we're supposed to win the Sun Belt again. I don't know why one of my coach goals is finished this year in the top 25, but I really don't see that happening even if we're supposed to be a top 50 team. I know we're going to start to have a lot more first team all Sun Belt All-Americans, but that's still a very lofty expectation. We're going to win this game in overtime, and it should never be this close versus an FCS school. But now I'm going to take all my focus over to recruiting and build a 
strong board for us. Unfortunately, I was only able to get one instant commit, but Chris Olsen is the 27th best corner in the country, and now we have a really big game against Louisville. I want to play it because we've never beat a team from our state in this rebuild, and I feel like we have a decent chance, but we have got to get into the end zone here, and there we go. We'd also move it down the field with a little time left in the half, and I didn't mean to throw that, but what's important is that it worked, and that was a terrible throw. Hamby just threw it straight into our offensive lineman. Now he takes the sack, and to be honest, I could just get one final snap off. We can't take a field goal. So that wasn't the best way to end the second quarter. But what I wasn't expecting was Louisville to outscore us by 28 in the second half. Their coach must have said something at halftime. And at the beginning of the year, I changed our offense to an air raid, but I think we need to go back to the pro style. That's what worked wonders for us last season. And with a C-rated defense, we really don't have to put up that many points. What we do need to do, though, is make sure that we can get in the first place on these four-star recruits. And I'm starting to accept that we're not going to win some of these battles, so I'll just take those guys off our board. We ended up going from having 32 players on there to only 20, but that needed to happen because some of these seniors are going to be very hard to replace. And if I don't put more attention into these four-star recruits, we're just not going to get them. Going into week four, I was also able to sign this guy from Montana. And it looks like five of the top seven guys on our board are ready for a visit. So we're going to schedule that. It's also weird that we have some better program grades than schools like Kentucky, but that's just how it works out. And our visit week is going to be against North Texas. I think this is a good game for it because we're favored to win. And we're also a higher overall team. Now I have decided to hop into this one too, but that's because I think it could be very important. And in my eyes, it is well worth it if the school signs their first four star in this rebuild. But this run heavy offense is not working whenever we don't have a solid of a running back. So we're passing. I've been trying to pound it all day, but this is a 68 overall back there. And I don't know what type of glitch this is. The Eagle mascot is out there on the field, but we make it. The real reason we should come out on top of this game though has been because of our defense down here on a third and goal. There's no way they were getting that. And here we go. Fourth and goal. Let's just make sure they don't pick it up. We have to generate some pressure and we have zones over there. Just knock that down. I've definitely been able to feel the difference between using an 86 overall running back and then a 68 overall, but we're leaving with the win, so I'm happy with that, and I hope the visiting recruits were impressed. Now, our quarterback Garrett Hamby only has 61 speed, but I do want to switch it up and try out the spread offense, and I'm going to let Sim decide if we beat Troy or not. I can only hop into one more regular season game this year, and it could decide who wins the Sun Belt, but I have confidence in this roster, especially because of our defense, and look at that. As for our recruiting board, we're first place on these two wide receivers and this guard, which we all need. But who I really want is four-star male linebacker Jonathan Maxey, and I think Boston College is going to take him. They have higher grades than us on most stuff, but we could schedule him for a visit versus Idaho. But before that, we have to play Louisiana, and they've not won a single game this year. So I go into a lot of our Sunbelt matchups now, expecting us to just dominate. As of right now, the only other undefeated team in conference play in the Sunbelt's FAU, and we'll play them in week 10, but we have to deal with this visit week, where the Vandals are 0-5 going into it, and I just know that we're going to come out on top by a lot, but only 13. Our defense might concern me a little bit, but we got a soft commit on the four-star guard, and we jumped up to number one for Jonathan Maxey. Seeing signings become official, though, is the best thing. Clancy is our first four-star, and we did lose the four-star center, Chris Henry, to Iowa State, but maybe we'll still be able to flip him. This has been an ongoing battle throughout this entire season, and I'm not sure if we were able to do enough, but maybe we did, and I have added some new prospects to our board, just so there's other targets for us to go after the rest of the year. We've been a higher overall than almost every team we've played, and it's really helped that the Sun Belt's a terrible conference in this game. But what I'm starting to wonder is how we're ever going to make it to a championship because we're not going to have a good strength of schedule. We still aren't even receiving votes to make it to the top 25. And you'd probably think I'd play against FAU, but they picked up their first conference loss last week against Arkansas State. So I'll just end up simming this one. I will admit in the past week, we did lose out on these three guys, but we've been having our best year yet. So I can't be upset about it. And we just won by a point that would lead to the soft commit starting the flood in with four star middle linebacker, Jonathan Maxey being at the top. And I've spent a lot of time to make sure that we get this one player, so we better actually land him. It became official going into week 13 with him signing on. And our biggest rivals, Middle Tennessee State, is 0-10. This should be the easiest win that we have gotten all season, but they scored 21. And all of the players signing for us just keep on coming in. That would also be enough to get us ranked inside the top 25. And I was going to play our game against Arkansas State, but they lost again, so we've secured the Sun Belt. We've also ended up in first place for the final three prospects on our board. And since we signed a couple four-stars, maybe there's a chance this class finishes in the top 25, but I guess we'll find out. All I'm worried about is finishing the season 11 and 1, and we could do that right here with a win on the road at Hawaii, which we get. Taking the Sun Belt Trophy back to back is really nice, but we got thrown into the same bowl game we did last year, and this time it's against another ranked opponent in Houston, so we might not be able to win it. All of Garrett Hamby's stats did go up, but that resulted in some more interceptions as well, and Matthew Mosley tried to replace Aaron Richardson, but his stats are only half of what our running backs were last year. What's weird is he was also our leading receiver with 79 catches, and it's time
time to hopefully take home that trophy for the second year in a row. It's certainly been a lot more difficult without a solid rushing attack, as it took us three quarters to score a touchdown, and then they immediately returned the kickoff for six themselves, so I've pretty much lost all hope. This game never felt like much of a competition, which does worry me for our chances of winning a championship, because one day we have to be able to make that happen, and I'm gonna get this throw off to the end zone to our tall receiver, but he doesn't catch it. I was so excited when I recruited Thomas, because all I wanted to do was throw 50-50 balls up to him, but I think this isn't gonna work out for us either. And Houston would destroy us just like Louisville earlier in the year. There's clearly a lot of work that we still have to do as a program, but we have a young quarterback that continues to improve and break his record year after year. I obviously also got a contract extension, and in that, I noticed that we became a five-star prestige. That should really help in recruiting, and we're only gonna lose six seniors from this roster, but when one of them's an 88 overall, that hurts. As for transfers, this year we are getting three of them with an 88 overall sophomore redshirt quarterback, and I don't know why I recognize Pat Brown's name, but did we recruit him in the past? After seeing that, I don't even care for off-season recruiting, landing Rob Jackson while Brian Macklin chose Georgia Tech, and I think the reason our classes rank so low is because we didn't have that high of a quantity, but the quality was there with two four-stars and then 16 three-stars. That must not impact overalls that much, though, because this four-star is a lower overall than this three-star, and I never thought we'd have a quarterback room that looks this good. Our two freshman receivers are also the best two on the roster before training results, and Jonathan Maxey's coming in at a 67 overall. I spent so much time to get this guy, and that's actually kind of disappointing. But now let's see where Matt Combs fits best, and are you kidding me? It's at quarterback. I have put him there originally, but I think it's probably best to just make him a halfback since this room isn't as deep. And I really wish that Pat Brown didn't have to sit out a year for transferring, but he is well worth the wait, and I'm so excited to see how he does when he finally plays for us. Everything about Western Kentucky keeps expanding as we added another pipeline state, and our program stability grades up to an A, so I'm expecting recruiting to go well where we only have to replace six seniors. The quality of prospects should have gone up again as well, and there's our first five-star that's interested. So we're gonna have to go all out to get strong safety Derek Ostrander, and these stats look incredible compared to what we've been getting. If we could even get half of the guys I put on our board, we're gonna be set up so nicely, but our team overall hasn't budged yet. So going into this season, I'm expecting this year to go just like the last one did. We're starting ranked a little bit higher, but it's not that far up. And I'm just kind of curious if we can hold our own versus West Virginia. This is back when the Mountaineers were actually good, so there's gonna be a ton of fans at this game, and that paired with the rain makes these conditions far from ideal where I just threw it away. Apparently the R1 button in this game does that, and it's been throwing me off that L1 is a receiver instead, but now we're on a second and 20 and we drop it. Thomas really has not been the receiver I thought he would be for us, but maybe he could get open here, and that was underthrown into a pick. We'd end up stopping them, but now we have to hit a 46-yard field goal, which we do, but then they'd score a touchdown to end this half. I'm looking to get into the end zone, and they just ran that route for us. That's their second interception of the day. This is the problem with facing schools that are a lot better than us. We beat them off the line, but then he just ran it perfectly. And I've tried so hard to keep us in this game, but we have not gotten defensive stops in the second half. With a minute left on a fourth and nine, you can tell that this game's pretty much over. They got in instant pressure, and they're going to also swat it down. So we've discovered that we're not that good yet, and we're far from being ready to potentially reach the national championship. That's why I just have to keep recruiting well, and these are the top guys that I'm going after, but below them, you're going to see a lot of players that we're in first place for, and literally all I'm going to do is go in, offer them a scholarship, and see if we can get any of them to instant commit. It ended up not working for a single one of them, but I'm not stressing about it, and as people want to visit, we're going to schedule them for UL Lafayette. Before that, though, we get to beat up on an FCS school, and it makes me happy knowing we should come out on top of this one by a ton, but we won by three. Offensively, something is clearly not right, but I'm going to schedule all these guys for a visit anyway, and the fact that we're in first place for a five-star recruit is insane. This might be one of the most crucial games we've played in a while, because if we lose, none of those four stars are committing, but I'm confident in our team, and look at that. It didn't do much for us, but it did jump us up to number one on a couple of these prospects, and I think it's nuts that we can get this much interest in one week now, but that's the benefit of winning and raising these school grades. It only becomes an issue when we're competing with Ohio State for players, and they have a lead over two of the guys that I really want, so that's frustrating because there's not a single grade that we're better than them in, and as I continue to recruit during this dynasty, I do want to point out that I hope the new NCAA football game is similar to 14 instead of 11 with recruiting, because even though it's pretty cool to have all these in-depth options, it adds on hours per season in each dynasty, and that starts to stack up because I've already been filming for like 20 hours. There's literally so many small details that you could look into, and I do appreciate the depth that the game has, but a lot of them don't make that big of an impact, and after you do it year after year, it just becomes incredibly tedious. If EA really wants to nail recruiting, I think you got to keep it simple, but at the same time, if they want to have the in-depth option as well, you should be able to toggle between them. That's just my opinion after staring at this screen and battling it out for someone like Randy.
Andy King, who I probably spent an hour getting, and he's only a 63 overall now who will never play for us. I'm very curious to hear some of your all's thoughts down below, because if we didn't get so lucky at the beginning, this rebuild would take even longer. And even if we do land somebody like five-star Derek Ostrander, we're probably still a long way out from being able to win a championship. It would probably help if we didn't lose again this year. And Troy's normally one of the few teams that could take us down, but they scored zero. And aside for our game against West Virginia, our defense has been incredible. I'm hoping that we're able to cruise to our third straight conference championship. And 0-2 FIU shouldn't stand in our way at all either. We're going to beat them by 20. Our biggest rivals are also currently winless. So I'm expecting 6-1 and one as I simulate this and they scored 7. You would think us being this dominant would help us, but it actually hurts us because our conference prestige is so low and these two guys were going to lose to Ohio State. I've tried so hard to come back on them, but I just couldn't do it. And the number three center went to Virginia Tech over us as well. There's literally only thing that we do better than Ohio State that I've found and it's playing time, but they keep getting more interest than us. And I went through the tedious process of calling them every week just to see them choose another school, but at least we got these two four stars. And with only 10 other players on our board right now, I need to start to add some other guys. The main reason for that is because we've made more signings, including our first five star ever. And Derek Ostrander better be better than like a 72 overall. This could be a huge moment in school history. And the soft commits on these four stars are starting to become really easy to get. There's also something else that's starting to hit me. And that's the fact that we might never lose a Sunbelt game again. If I didn't have to recruit every single week, I'd just sim to the end of the year and see how we do. But like I said, it is very tedious. We get some more commits and I'm going right back to spamming phone calls. But at this point, I don't even care. I'm making the quick calls instead. I couldn't do that on some of these better prospects because the computer obviously won't do as good of a job. And I found a game I could actually hop into. FAU isn't that good on paper, but because they're five and one, this is for the Sunbelt Conference Championship. And if we were ever to lose a conference game, it would be this one. They've actually played us really well. And here on fourth and 16, I'm throwing it up to the end zone, but it goes out of bounds. So as you can see, we have been struggling a bit. It looks like they ran a wide receiver screen and please just make the tackle in time. This is not looking great for us. We haven't generated pressure very fast against this quarterback. And another annoying thing about playing against them is they've stayed in a hurry up offense throughout this entire game. Now they're getting another huge play. And to nobody's surprise, they finished that drive off with a touchdown on this third and 10. I went for the check down to Thomas, but that was the right move. It looks like they're running man to man and we have a slow quarterback. So I don't know why I tried to run. Another one of the reasons we are losing in this game is I have been very aggressive with my play calling, but that's because I have high expectations for this team. And on third and 13, why on earth did we not pick that or make the tackle there? You've got to be kidding. They'd score another touchdown. So I've pretty much accepted that we're about to lose to FAU. And this has been so frustrating here on fourth and 11. I'm throwing it up to our best receiver and he catches it. I have been waiting for Thomas to make a play like that for ages. And I'm going to do the same thing on this possession. It's a 2v1 in the end zone and neither of our guys went for the ball. It's going to be so nice to have an actual quarterback next season and we make the tackle. So they'd punt it back to us, but I feel like we have to run the Seattle play because it's one of the only ones that works. I mean, it would have if we just caught the ball there, but instead they're going to get pressure in. And if their kicker hits this field goal, it's pretty much over, but that's well short. There are some games where I can move the ball and there are others like this one where I've been struggling, but it's because our quarterback came into college with like D plus throw accuracy. And if we reach the end zone, I almost want to go for the two point conversion because that corner route created zero separation. I mean, it is literally so obvious that we don't deserve to be winning this, but that's only because of our own mistakes that we make time and time again. And why on earth did that just sit in the air for so long? I'm afraid we might lose a prestige if we drop this game to FAU, but that throw is going to be picked off. It was not on target to Duncan, so they are going to beat us. And that means that we are not winning the Sunbelt Conference Championship this year. That would change so fast though, because they lost to Troy the next week, which puts them at five and one in conference play. And we only have one Sunbelt game left against Arkansas State, so maybe we will win our conference. After beating Kent State, we signed a four-star quarterback, but Florida Atlantic won, so they're going to jump us in the standings. We really need FIU to win this rivalry game so we can take the Sun Belt, but they don't. And that's frustrating because I think we're going to drop down to a four-star school. On top of that, we're struggling to get some of these final recruits. And I've been trying to get Adrian Wilson to flip on Arizona State, but it's been weeks, so I don't think it's going to happen. We'd also lose the 28th best corner to Utah. And I don't even care if we beat Louisville. I'm pretty sure I still have one game I could hop into, but I'm just ready to get into the next season. We get the win and we would sign Chase Peer, but we still have not gotten Franklin Wood or Adrian Wilson. As for our bowl game this year, it's the Papa John's one. And even though we'd come up short of taking the Sunbelt Conference title, we're still considered a top 25 team. And I don't know how I'm ever going to make a championship when all these schools are undefeated and only two can do it in this game. That's all that's on my mind right now. And Garrett Hamby is not the best, which is why I'm glad that next season he's not starting for us. And I can't believe that halfback Matthew Mosley led the team in receptions again. For whatever reason, he's actually been a stud. And let's go out and win the Papa John's Bowl. So far, it's been a defensive battle, but we're about to make it into the end zone. And after forcing an interception, 
interception. I feel like we got to throw up a 50-50 ball. We have the speed at wide receiver, but not the arm strength. Because I got relaxed, Syracuse would score 14 straight, and that's how we're losing with a few minutes left. But our defense is trying so hard to keep us in this one, and I saw that route toast us. We're not going to get back to the ball, or maybe we will with Wright. What an interception. To keep the drive alive, though, we have to pick up this fourth and two, and that is going to be caught. So we have continued to move it down the field. I have to wait for us to get open versus this man-to-man -man coverage. You can tack on a face mask penalty on top of it. Or maybe not. That's not what the ref signaled for. And Karen Thomas has been such a disappointment. I was so excited when we first got him. But at least we were able to score a touchdown. Now we have got to get a defensive stop. And I was right there. Why didn't he give it to me? I don't get the interceptions in this game. It just never seems to happen the way I need it to. And if they handed this off on third down, we would be in a lot of trouble. I only sent three, so he's got plenty of time back there. And please get the sack. Now it is fourth and six. We can't let them get into the end zone, but I see it getting open. And I think we're going to lose another bowl game unless we can pull off a miracle here at the end. Next season should be a lot different because we are going to have a quarterback that can just chuck it up even farther. But this was a really good throw. And Karen Thomas is actually selling. We should have gotten such a huge gain there. I don't know what it is about Heisman difficulty on this game, but we just don't seem to be able to catch the ball. I threw it up to Wilson this time. He didn't come back to it. And that means Syracuse is going to beat us. Unfortunately, that means our team prestige drops. And we're losing 287 overalls to graduation. They also came from the transfer portal like all of our best players and we got another quarterback. But what I wasn't expecting was to get a recruit to flip as we got Franklin Wood while Adrian Wilson chose Arizona State. I'm really proud with how this class turned out though, signing our first five star. And even though it only had 15 players, it's going to finish at 23rd in the country. As for some of the freshmen, they're the highest overalls on this team. And Franklin Wood, who I wanted so bad, just becomes a 67 overall wide receiver. I'll also be moving Derek Ostrander over to free safety because we have a strong safety that's a 77. And somehow our quarterback room got even better. If I've learned anything from all the players I just recruited, we have got to get more four and five stars and transfers as well. So I'm about to make a move that you all are not going to like. Garrett Hamby has been a great player in this program, but he's now the worst QB in this room and we're going to say goodbye to him. The same thing's going to happen to tight end Robert Miller, who started for us for two seasons. But now that his replacement's on the roster, we might as well cut him. I'm doing that with a lot of different positions and I was going to do it to Randy King too, but it won't let me cut him. So he'll be on the team for just the time being and we have 11 seniors to replace. This class might not be as good because we dropped a prestige and we'll see which prospects have us inside their top 10 where, like expected, there's no five stars. When it comes to the redshirting portion of things, I almost want to save Matthew Mosley for another year, but we have a 95 overall quarterback on our roster, so I've decided that I'm just going to let him play. We're also going to throw Kentucky, Louisville, and all the way at the bottom, Cincinnati on our schedule. So just in case we somehow go undefeated, we have a chance at making it to the championship, but even then, our strength of schedule probably won't be hard enough here in the Sun Belt. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but Matthew Mosley's in the running for the Heisman. Two minutes ago, I almost redshirted this guy to give him another year, and that makes me feel kind of confident knowing that Western Kentucky's on the map. It's the reason that we're getting instant commits on four stars like Anthony Rogers, and we're actually a higher overall than Kentucky. Before we hop into that game, though, I got another instant commit, and tight end Brian Jackson, 6'8". We're in a really good position to keep on improving, and offensively with Pat Brown, so far things have been pretty good. Our defense is still solid, and we're actually able to score now. So for a game that I thought would come down to the wire, it honestly wasn't even close. And Kentucky is given up by punting the ball back to us with a few minutes left, so we're just going to have to make sure we don't fumble it, and we don't. That was a huge win for the Hilltoppers, but I know we also have Louisville on the schedule, so we're going to have to play good next week as well. As for Pat Brown, this is not a bad debut, and just imagine what he's going to do to some of our Sunbelt opponents. Now, just like against Kentucky, we're favored against the Cardinals, so I am going to trust this team to come out on top, and that's what we do by 34. I really wish I would have scheduled these prospects for a visit before I did that, and now instead it's going to have to be this week against FAU. Even with a player in the Heisman race, we're not ranked in the top 25 yet, but that should be happening very soon, and we just keep falling behind by more points on all these guys. Losing that one star of prestige has made a big difference, and I'm afraid until we get it back, our recruiting class is going to take a major step back. On the bright side, we should keep crushing our opponents as they have not won a game yet. We won by 49, and I wonder if there's any chance we'll get an invite to a new conference on this game. It would be really neat if so, so we could keep landing top classes, but since we don't have many team needs, I might be making a mistake by only going after a few different players, and then letting the computer handle everything else. They should still do all right, and I think we got at least five more years left in this rebuild, so I'm looking for ways to get through seasons quicker than every three to four hours because I'm already at the end of day two. Because I focused in on a couple guys, we would get a soft commit on Ryan Thorne, who would be our starting running back next year, assuming he comes in at like a 72 overall, but Wake Forest and Boise State are ahead of us on Andy Wilson, and I should also mention that we have made it into the top 25. We're going to need all the undefeated teams in the country to lose, though, if we want to make it to the championship game, and at the same time, we also have to keep on winning 
and that's what we do on the road. We'd also get the four star halfback I wanted, but the computer doesn't seem to be doing a great job losing all of these battles, and then I lost this one on Andy Wilson. At the end of this season, I might look back and really regret letting the computer do most of the recruiting, but we're currently cruising through Sunbelt Conference play, and on the road at Troy is a perfect place for me to pick up at tomorrow. This is one of the biggest games of our season, because we could still go undefeated, and I've been playing very well offensively so far. We're about to take a three possession lead, but it looks like there is a flag on the play, and I think that's just the refs trying their hardest to keep Troy in this one. I'm going to try to thread the needle though, and it's dropped. To be honest, there is no reason to force it in this situation, because we could at least get a field goal out of it. And the thing that really confuses me is even though we have a 95 overall quarterback, he's still not that accurate. He has set us up for a fourth and short though, which we are going to get. And when you combine that with the fact that our defense has been incredible throughout this entire matchup, there's a reason we're going to get the win. We haven't scored as much here in the second half, but we also have not had to. And for whatever reason, the option pitches just don't work for me on this game. It doesn't matter though, we're still going to come out on top by a ton, and that should put us on the map even more than we already are. But what really helps us is we play number three Cincinnati on the road to end our season. If anything's going to help us climb into the top two, it would be beating them while also having all of these schools lose. And we still haven't lost a game to our rivals yet, so I already know how this one's going to go against Middle Tennessee State with us winning by 42. The computer's also picked up the pace with the signings, bringing in four more guys. And we'll see how this class turns out, but I'm starting to realize that I should be able to trust them to do a decent job. After having a bye week, going into week 13, we're sitting down here at number eight, and it's the same in the media poll, but what's really important is the BCS one, and that's also number eight. There's a small part of me that has some hope now, because if we could beat Cincinnati next week on the road, that would prove that we're really good. And we just leapfrogged a ton of teams with that win, with only Iowa, Cincinnati, and Michigan being above us. Somebody had to lose, and I think it was Utah, Texas A&M, and then UCF still undefeated as well. But they don't have a quarterback that's currently number one in the Heisman race. And the only reason Pat Brown's up there is because he's playing in the Sun Belt and destroying teams. I literally lucked out with putting Cincinnati on the schedule as well, because they had a great season in the Big East, staying undefeated. And if we could beat them, that would give us another quality win, since we're not really getting many against these opponents. Our combined opponent record is 56 and 76, but none of that matters now. We're playing in our first ever game of the week, and Nippert Stadium has not changed at all. I used to be one of the guys there in the crowd, and now I need to be the reason that we beat the Bearcats on second and 10. That route got open down to the five, so we're set up for a third and two where we're going to run the ball and mostly gets us the first. To end the first quarter, we should just tie things up, but they shot that gap so well that I wasn't even able to hand the ball off. Because of that, I'm going to pass it this time around, and I'm going to go to the flat where Wilson fights his way in, but what we really need is our defense to continue playing as well as they have all season, and that was my zone. The thing that drives me crazy about playing defense on this game is teams stay in hurry-up mode throughout the entire drive, so if you put the wrong personnel out there on the field, there's not too much that you can do about it, and they're going to reach the end zone again. Now it is on us to end the first half in the right way. They've stuck with all the routes I wanted to take, though, so now I'm going to be patient and then throw this very late, which they're still going to intercept. Route bounces on this game do not work like they do on NCAA Football 14, and that probably should have been intercepted, but it wasn't, so we opened up the third quarter in the best way possible. I knew these corner routes were probably going to come, and we swat it down. We would then drive it all the way down the field, so we're very close to taking the lead, and it is starting to set in that this is legitimately a potential playoff team as long as they don't pick up this third and 14, and they don't, giving us the ball back with another opportunity to score some points, but they do have a quarterback spy out there, and they played it well. You have to get a lot of defensive stops in this game if you want to beat anybody. I feel like our man-to-man -man coverage has done a solid job, though. There's no way that they catch this in bounds. And let's see what type of defensive look they're giving us here. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and we are going to have our tight end. That's a great way to end the third quarter, and I've had to turn two clock on because I want to be able to beat Cincinnati. This halfback toss goes for 10 more, which means we're pretty much in field goal range, so we could take a two-possession lead, but the halfback screen got boxed up, and I don't know what I was thinking. If it wasn't for a holding call, we wouldn't have a good chance at getting them off the field on this third and 21, but we do, and they have no choice but to punt it back. This entire game has been absolute chaos for us, but we could pretty much end all of that if we just picked up this third and seven, and I'm going to step up in the pocket with Brown and go down. If Cincinnati wants to get the ball back now, there's only going to be about 30 seconds, so that is a good sign that we are about to come out on top, and we're so close to reaching the first down marker. Mostly would actually seal it for us there, and I don't even know why we're still trying to run, because by now we can go out there and take a knee. We just took down the number two team in the country, and let's just hope that's enough to put us inside the top two ourselves. I think it will be since we've been performing really well, but our weak strength of schedule does concern me, and this is how it shaped out. Obviously, we're not playing in a conference championship game, but some of these schools are, including undefeated UCF, and I'm scared that they might end up jumping us. I'm a little bit surprised that back then the Big Ten didn't have one, but that kind of works in our favor, and you'll see that we won the Heisman. We 
have also made it to the national championship game. And I think the only reason for that is because we just beat number two Cincinnati on the road. It's amazing to see how much Pat Brown dominated this season. And I'm so glad we didn't end up redshirting halfback Matthew Mosley, even if his stats regressed. Our number one receiver who went over a thousand yards ended up being tight end Vincent Dykes. And I can't remember where he transferred from, but this is his first year with us. I can't be getting too excited though, because we still have to win this. And if we do, that would mean that I've successfully completed this rebuild. I was not expecting to be here this year, but Pat Brown had different ideas. And I can already tell that the Wolverines are going to be super hard to take down. Here on second and goal, they go with the run, but we're going to hold them. So that makes it third down. And that is going to be an open player. I have a feeling if they run man-to-man -man coverage, it's going to be really hard to dot up. But I've had no issues with their zone so far, and we're going to get another first down. We have been feeding our tight end, and now I'm going to try to escape the pocket with Pat Brown. They have so many players getting to him. So we're probably just going to have to stand tall or maybe run up the middle for a touchdown. So far, we've had a hard time stopping them, but we do here on third and one. And that's the perfect way to end the first quarter. I mean, I'm assuming they're going to have a good enough kicker to hit this field goal, but he misses. And we are driving down the field after that, but they have a defensive lineman that just picked us off. They're so scared of Pat Brown scrambling. They have two quarterback spies out there, and I tried to hit our tight end. But luckily for us, our defense forced a fumble immediately after. So we got it back down inside the red zone, and I'm going to take it up the middle whenever they don't have a quarterback spy out there. It's definitely justified when they do put them out there on the field, though, and that's a bad throw. So you might be able to tell why I like to run it with Pat Brown more than throw it, and I'm taking the sack. I knew that was probably coming. I should have been more careful, but they ran cover three. And with 20 seconds left, they're on a fourth and three. But they'd run the clock all the way down until there was just a couple left. So after they failed to pick it up, there's only a couple seconds left in this half. I'm going to try and get off the Hail Mary. It is not going to reach the end zone. But I don't care. We have a seven-point lead on Michigan in the BCS National Championship. We also got the ball to start the third quarter where we've been driving down the field. And that man-to-man -man coverage allows me to take off with Pat Brown. So we are closing in on putting up even more points and I'm throwing it on the run. This game couldn't be going better than it is. And I do find it strange that in NCAA football 11, a B overall team's considered good, but we saw in recruiting, even the three stars only 65 overall. So that makes sense. I say that because I thought we were going to have to become an A overall team to keep up with the bigger programs, but that's clearly not been the case. And they've started to put together a really good drive against us. So I would love to hold them, but the drag gets open and they're going to take it all the way down to the 15. I really hope we win this game. I do not want to have to play another season or two in this rebuild, but nothing is going our way right now with that penalty. And they would get a touchdown after that, but now we have the ball back needing to pick up this third and inches where it came very close to us not making it, but we did. I'm going to have two clock on during this entire fourth quarter. And that's the exact reason why the screens on this game don't work well. I feel like the computer's cheating because they've already been able to get us to a third and 10. And I see our corner route getting open, but they knocked it down. I really don't want to blow this game. I know that I've done it in previous games in this rebuild, but Michigan is working it down the field on us really well. And they're about to get another first. Eventually they would make it inside the red zone and they faked me out with that read option and and that juke, but we stripped the ball loose. And on second and 11, it's a halfback screen where we have some players over there. Now it is third and eight. I just can't give up anything stupid. And that leaves us with a minute and a half to cook against this defense to get into field goal range. Against cover three, four verticals has become my best friend. We're going to use it again. And I'm running the counter here, but they have somebody on that side already ready to stop us. So I legitimately believe the computer's cheating to know exactly what I'm running when I run the ball. We can win the game right here though. And that's what we're going to do. So West Western Kentucky has won it all, and I think I came a long way in this rebuild. I really didn't know what I was doing in the beginning with the gameplay or recruiting, but I was still able to fix the worst team in NCAA Football 11. And there's the trophy celebration clip. This is different than 14s. This clip is the same one, though. I do recognize that. And that game ended up being an instant classic as well. I think it's kind of funny that Cincinnati offered me a job after we beat them. But what I really wanted to see was us sitting at number one in the polls. And I don't know if it tells you if players are getting drafted or not in NCAA Football 11, because I'd assume that senior Pat Brown would at a 95 overall. I couldn't figure it out, but now we have to take a look at our school record books because we set a lot of them throughout this rebuild with a ton of different players. And I can't forget Aaron Richardson either because he started the four-year run where we won double-digit games every season. And that is going to finally conclude what was a very long rebuild for me on NCAA Football 11.